Welcome to October's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is minimum number of arrows to burst balloons. There are some spherical balloons spread in two-dimensional space. For each balloon provided input is the start and end coordinates of the horizontal diameter. So it's like the x-axis points. Since it's horizontal, y coordinates don't matter. And hence, x coordinates of start and end of the diameter suffice. Start is always smaller than the end, which makes sense. Now, an arrow can be shot up exactly vertically from different points along the x-axis. A balloon with x start and x end burst by an arrow shot at x if x start is within x or x is within x star and x end. There's no limit to the number of arrows that can be shot. An arrow once shot keeps traveling up infinitely. So, given an array points where points i equals x start and x end, we turn the number, minimum number of arrows that must be shot to burst all the balloons. So we can see with this example here, it's gonna be two arrows since one arrow is gonna burst the two eight and one six, while the arrow, other arrow will burst the 10, 16 and seven twelve. So essentially we're trying to find some overlap here. Now let's go to a notepad and just visualize this for a second. So say that we had balloons, um, not the best artist here, but let's just say like we had some balloons here. This one looks like this. This one's a little fatter. Um, and this one's like here, or something like that. So here we can see that there's like one overlap between this range of x-axis. And this one's separate. So how many arrows would it take to burst these three balloons? Well, it'd take two, right? One arrow would go up here, just burst these two and the other arrow comes up here, whatever, and bursts up this one. So this is just really a tricky way of talking about interval problems, right? And what we're trying to do essentially is um, find the number of overlaps and return that number. So let's just think of a couple of examples. Uh, the first thing we want to do with these interval problems is almost always sort. And we're going to sort it because that's gonna allow us to do it in um, not linear time once we sort it. So let's just think like if we had some intervals like this, like what's being kept track of? Well, we know the answer is gonna be two here, right? There's gonna be one lap here and one lap here. So it'll be two arrows. So what we'll do is start with the first balloon and we're gonna to check to see if the start axis of the next balloon is less than the end balloon here. And if that's the case, then it's almost like we can assume that there's some overlap and not count this balloon because we know that an arrow that pops this balloon at this point is gonna pop this balloon. Now it's only when the start of the next one is uh, not within that range. So this start here you can see when we check to see, is the start less than this? Yes, so we skip that. But this start is not less than the end of the last balloon. So that's going to uh, require another arrow, right? So this is gonna be equal to. And same way, if, if they all did overlap, like say it was like this, like all these starts here are below the end of the first balloon, right? So this would just be one. So it's almost like we have a start with a total of one here. Check to see if the starts are greater. And it's only when the starts are greater than the next balloon, like if we had another one here, that we increase our count. So we'll say one and now equals two. Now there is one thing that we need to keep um, track of though. It's possible that the first balloon is like really big and kind of engulfs the others. And if that's the case, if we had like something like this, our algorithm would think, well, these starts are less than the end of here, so this should be one arrow, right? But we can clearly see, nope, it's gonna take two arrows here, because these two, uh, even though they get engulfed here and overlap with the first one, they don't technically, uh, they'll still require two arrows. So to do that, um, what we're gonna do is like basically start with the first balloon, still do the same algorithm, but we're gonna update our end. We'll start with like our end here, and it's gonna start like all the way up here, check to see if this one is, um, if starts greater than the end. It's not, so we can skip that, but we'll update our start to now be here. And the next balloon we can check, oh, well, this start is greater, so that's gonna be another arrow. All right, so 
I wish I could have explained that a little bit better, but hopefully that sort of makes sense. So let's think about what's required here. First, we need to sort our points, and this will automatically sort it by the first index or first item. So well, actually, I should say first, if not points, return zero. And after that, we can sort. Now we want to store the previous balloon somewhere, and we can just start with the first balloon here. We'll say points zero is going to be the previous, and we'll have a list there of the start and end points. Next, we'll initialize a total, and because we have one balloon already in previous, we'll say it's one. So now for start and end in points, starting at the second item, we are going to check if the start is greater than the previous end, well, then we will increase our total. And we'll also update our previous to equal the balloon here. Otherwise, we don't really do anything. The only thing we do is update the, <clears throat> the end of our previous balloon to take care of those uh, if the, if this balloon is like covering more than it should, then we'll get the minimum between previous set one and the end here. And after that, we can just return the total. So let's do a couple test cases. This looks like it works. What about this one? Oh, let's check this one. And it looks like it's working. Let's go and submit that. And there we go, accepted. Yeah, great. So this is time complexity wise n log n because of this sort. Even though we get to do it in linear time here, we have to sort it. So, uh, but luckily we don't really have to use extra space. We do have this one previous one, but that's basically constant. So it's basically constant space. So thank you. This question is. Um, I mean, it looks more complicated than it actually is. Uh, just take some, you know, examples to think about. And once you kind of come up with a basic algorithm, you can kind of come up with a solution. So, all right. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.